Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. I'm John. This is Video True, and welcome back to Fallout 2, where you join me here in Arroyo as their chosen champion. Because last time we completed the Temple of Trials, which I was expecting to be the worst thing in the history of Fallout ever. And it wasn't really, it was just sort of not particularly Fallouty. It was a bit too focused on stabbing things in the face without enough alternative approaches. But it's so infamously one of the worst openings to a Fallout game ever, I was expecting something terrible. So to me it seemed actually pretty darn good, all things considered, because I was expecting something much worse. But yes indeed, today we need to set out on our big adventure and actually save Arroyo. But before we do that, there's one more thing I need to cover off. Yeah, there was a bunch of stuff I didn't really discuss last time because there was so much to do and it was quite a long episode, so I didn't want to spend too much time I'm discussing absolutely everything in one go. And that's just about the state of this game in case you want to play along or you're very familiar with this game and you suddenly get confused by something you see, which is I have very slightly modded this game. You don't need to do much modding. Fallout 2 actually mostly holds up pretty nicely. So there is a single mod installed, which is the Restoration Project, which basically just fixes a bunch of bugs and restores a bit of content that people found inside the game's files when they went digging inside them. Stuff that wasn't actually implemented in the game as it was released, but was actually still made by the original development team. Some of which is therefore been put back in. And a nice simple example of this is if we go over to the Karma tab right over here, then you'll notice that I have a little kind of extra Karma perk thing right there, which means that officially at the beginning of the game, I am a virgin. So obviously as you go out into the world, if you sleep with someone, you'll actually lose that. So that wasn't actually in the game as it was released, but it was actually written and created by Black Isle. So this mod just puts that back in. It also creates a rather fascinating backstory for my character, which is I'm literally a 30 year old virgin who supposedly has the right stuff. Apparently I'm in possession of sex appeal. I suspect I'm not. I think my character just likes to assume they have sex appeal. Possibly they're overcompensating for the fact they're a 30 year old virgin. So technically my mission in this game is to go and find the Gek in order to save my village. I now consider that secondary. My main priority is to seduce as many people as possible and make up for lost time. Also, I'd never thought about this before, but I'm really going to keep a very close eye on my age because, as I mentioned last time, technically this game is on a time limit, which is you need to complete the game before 13 years are over. If a year of in-game time does actually pass, because you do actually know what date it is, does my age actually go up? Do I actually age during this game? Ooh, I'll need to remember to keep an eye on that one. That's fascinating. Right, back up at the north of the village. I know the hunting grounds with just some geckos are over here. This is back to the Temple of Trials. So logically, this here is my door out to the big wide world. Let's flippin' go. Okay, I just accidentally went back to the Temple of Trials. Apparently that wasn't the way out of the village. In which case... Is this the way out of the village? Hello, I thought you were guarding the way back to the temple. No, wait, that is the temple. Right, the temple loops round on itself. Right, does anyone know how to leave the village? Because I don't. Oh, hang on, there's a transition down here at the south. Okay, when we write the official history of the Chosen One, can we not include the bit where my first step of the journey was completely failing to figure out where the exit to the village was? You are standing at the Great Bridge, passageway from your village to the vast wasteland. There we go! That's flipping better! And looks like we can actually get some last minute advice before we go from the guys who are, yeah, right here at the bridge. So, uh, where can I find more healing powder? I already know about uh, Xanderoot and Brock Flower. What else can you tell me? Go and see Hacken. Fine, so that's just basically pointing me in the direction of the guy who can tell me about making my own. Gotcha. Now hang on, not making my own, bringing him the ingredients, he makes it for me. I am apparently nowhere near as capable as the courier is. Ah, but this one's important. What can you tell me of the traders who trade with us? They are nothing to us, they scavenge the dying corpse of the waste to live. Okay, not particularly useful. And yeah, the healing herbs. Where can I actually find more of them? And once again, he just points me towards Hakun. Fine, okay, nothing major there. And one last person, the bridge guard himself. Hello, chosen one, off to find the Gek. Yes, indeed, before I go, I'd like to ask you some questions. Uh, not just yet, and uh, yes, but I was wondering about your spear. It looks a bit different. Hello there. My father taught me how to make stronger blades than most. Get me a piece of flint and I'll fix your spear too. You'll need it in the wilderness. Alright, where do I get that? They say your Aunt Morlis. Oh, my Aunt Morlis hates me, dear oh flippin' dear. Though I could just steal it from her, that'd be easy too. Honestly, I need to take the chance to try and get this flint because I need it every flipping advantage I have. I am not a melee setup character. I haven't come across a gun yet and... Yeah, things could potentially get nasty out there. I need every possible advantage. So, uh, Minox said... Uh, Minox said what? Out with it, child. I need the flipping flint, auntie. 
And you want some? Yes. Well, I want three doses of- Whoa, 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 whoa. Three doses of healing powder. I think I've got six in all the world. So, uh, that, that is not happening, alright? If I say no, is there any alternative solution? Because I'm not giving her half my healing supplies. Just out of interest, is it actually inside her house? Because it's entirely possible it's just in her house. And... Uh, not there. Come on, search everywhere. Oh, she doesn't. She doesn't have it in her house as far as I can tell, but she does have... Oh, yeah. Money. Here we go. I think I'll be having literally all of her money. Screw you, hoarding money from the village. That's pretty much as much money as the village elder had to give me. And I have just lost three karma for stealing from my own tribe. Well, she's trying to rob me too. I don't feel bad about this. Fun thing, of course, you may notice this looks distinctly like coinage and not bottle caps. Yeah, well, caps were in Fallout 1 and then Bethesda brought them back because they were so iconic. Actually, the NCR on the West Coast was moving away from bottle caps towards, you know, more traditional coinage, currency, all of that good stuff. Which gets represented in New Vegas, of course, because the NCR has its own currency. Though the soldiers and contractors do prefer getting paid in caps, as they specify in Sloan, because the cap actually seems to be worth quite a bit more. So while the NCR was trying to reintroduce currency, it wasn't exactly without issues and many people just prefer to keep using bottle caps. So yeah, New Vegas had a bit of a compromise between the new and the old, but yeah, we've actually got money here that is not a bottle cap. Well, it's not in her house as far as I can tell, meaning I'm guessing it's on her person, but I'm not going to be able to steal it. I'm terrible at flipping stealing. Now, in this game, you can just save and then try and do a skill check over and over and over again until it succeeds. I don't like doing that. It feels exploity and cheaty, so I'm not going to be doing that, as I basically am not going to be able to steal that. Instead, I think on reflection, I've got six healing powders, which is a decent amount. I will do her the trade. Go on then, here's the flint. Off with you, I don't have time to gossip. Dear oh flipping dear. Don't say thank you, you've just been flipping robbed. Having a more powerful weapon means I'm less likely to actually, you know, need to heal up. So, uh, I'm hoping this is a good trade. So, speak to my knock. I have some right over here. It is a good piece, give me your spear. So, this thing was doing 3 to 11 damage was its damage range. And he put the pieces like so... And he has made a new spear. Thank you. And we can see the improvement there because, yeah, he's only been able to improve one of my spears. So one of my spears is now a sharpened spear, which, yeah, does 4 to 13 on the damage range up from 3 to 11. So average damage is now up from 7 to 8.5. So, that's probably worth it. That's a decent increase right there. So, I'll have the sharpened spear in one slot and the knife in the other, because then if I've just got a tiny handful of action points left and I can't do another thrust with the spear, I might be able to get a stab in with the knife just to finish someone off if need be. And here we go. We cross the bridge and our adventure begins. And here we go, we've got ourselves a map. Now, we know where Klamath is already because, yeah, various people in the village seem to be familiar with it. We knew it was to the east and the game has also put it on our map. So this is how time works in this game, which is while you're inside a location, like a town, for example, or a temple, time, I believe, at that point totally stands still. Time only starts moving on when either you're moving through the overworld, because this is supposed to be like, you know, a big amount of space. It might take me days to get to Klamath, or if you do things like do some training with someone, like we did in the village last time. So I spoke to someone, they said, hey, this will take most of a day, and then when we were done, it was like night. So maybe like 18 hours passed, and I was supposed to have been training. So those are the only two times time actually passes. When you choose to make time pass by doing an action, you can do that yourself by doing things like first aid, I believe uses up like a few hours or something or if you're actually traveling. And while you're traveling, you might run into random encounters. Random encounters in this game are mean, because old Fallout in general was mean. I might just run into something right now that just murders me, straight away, 100% possible. So save before you go on big journeys, because you can just be completely flipping screwed over. Some of the events are nice, some of them are nasty, and some of them are just instant flipping death until you're a little bit better set up. So... Uh, Go on then, we are now heading over to Klamath, and uh, time is just ticking along there, you can see it up in the top right, it is now afternoon back to evening, and we've run into something. A tall and powerfully built warrior stands before you, his eyes blaze with hatred as he looks you over. Right, so this is one of those moments I'm about to die then, good, 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 good. 
Who are you then? So, they cast out Karga, then deem you the chosen one. Ha! You think being the grandchild of the Vault Dweller makes you special? You think you are better than I, Karga the Great? Yeah, confirmation there. The actual Vault Dweller of Fallout 1 was my grandfather. Yeah, I really feel like that society regressed a bit quickly to barbarians and shamans and whatnot, given it's literally two generations later. So, I never said I was better than you. Well, I am the chosen one, aren't I? Well, I never actually said I was better than you. Yeah, let's try and talk this guy down. Otherwise, he's going to stab me in the face and then I'm going to die. Because I'm not actually very good with this sharpened spear. No words can save your hide. With your death, Karga's honor will be restored. Karga will now take his vengeance. Okay, it's entirely possible I'm about to die. This is why I dropped a save just before we left the village. Because this is literally the first fight after the Temple of Trials. <laughs> And how outnumbered am I? That guy runs over here. Let's actually check what we've got here. So we have got uh, Karga himself. Have a little Luke see at him. He's currently unhurt fine. So we don't actually know much about these guys. So these guys have just been cast out. Possibly this is actually a fixed encounter. I'm not sure because, yeah, these guys have been cast out. So it makes sense they'd be very, very close by to Arroyo. So, I mean, I guess we give it a go. We've got a 50-50 shot of stabbing him. And he immediately... You can't kill what you can't hit. He's not wrong, you know. Continue stabbing. And we get one hit in there. Fine, that was 12 hit points. That's not bad. He's wounded. That's one of three stages a person can be. You don't actually see the enemy's health. You just get told whether they're wounded, severely wounded, or almost dead. So he's in the first stage. So he's still got plenty of health. And also, he's got friends. Now, also, thank you to the comments who reminded me of something I did know for Fallout 1, but I'd forgotten. Any action points that you have spare at the end of your turn, if you just end your turn rather than running away, those get converted into armor class, which basically just translates into your chance to dodge, which is probably a good idea. So I'm going to end my turn right there, and there we go. You see armor condition goes up from 10 to 12. They run away, and... Is he not planning to actually stab me? Ah, possibly it's not his turn because I have such high sequence because I've got high perception. Spot on. Well, the best thing I can do is probably just continue trying to stab him. So, 40% chance to hit. Stop while you're ahead. Continue trying to hit. Okay, so we got him once there for nine, but then we missed again. He's still wounded, not severely wounded. I'm about to die. <laughs> and now they've come in and stabbed me for four. One person decided to run away, and then I was stabbed for four, six, and four. Right, I've just lost about half my health. This is good. This is all exactly what I wanted to happen the moment I stepped away. I'm going to die right here. So, Outcast was hit for six, and hang on. Which one of you's Karga? Ah, Karga decided to run away and leave this up to his companions. Okay. Maybe they'll run away if I stab them as well. So, okay, we've done like six hit points to one, eight to the other. If these guys are wounded, maybe they'll back off because Karga seems to have run away. All right, they're just doing more stabbing down to 15 hit points. And I think Karga did just basically flesh. <laughs> okay, the problem is I'm almost dead. I'm probably going to die to his flipping companions at this point because they seem to be much better at melee fighting. Okay, we knocked one of them down. That's lucky. So yeah, that was 12 and a knockdown. He seems to have got straight back up again. How are you doing? You're wounded. You're severely wounded. <laughs> I'm going to die in the first encounter of the game, aren't I? Oh, you missed though. And then missed and missed again. Good, good, good. We're getting the dodges in. Right, keep going. 41%. And that was a miss. Go for this guy. We actually hit him for five. He's still not flipping dead. Severely wounded. He's not even almost dead. I think I'm actually about to lose. This is hilarious. Right flipping here. The very first fight of the game after the bloody tutorial. I mean, the alternative is I could have just run for it. There's nothing to stop you just basically running for the hills, which probably I should have done as soon as I realized this was going to hell in a handcart. But I did rather want their stuff, it must be said. Right, I've knocked both of them down. And they're both actually, yeah, severely wounded, which is good stuff. Can I just talk to you? No, that's a skill thing. Fine. I probably don't want to actually use first aid on him. That'd be a bad idea. So they're both severely wounded, but they're not actually done. And now I'm dead. Right, so that's game over. I've just officially failed to be the chosen one. I'm now just dead. Let's try that again.
Well, we don't seem to have run into the same event in the same spot, so possibly that was me just being catastrophically unlucky. So we've got something else here. Do you wish to encounter some geckos hiding amongst spore plants? Can I actually handle that? I mean, I probably can, and if I decide I don't want to, I can just back off. So, don't turn down some free XP here. So, I gain 86 experience points for successfully using the Outdoorsman skill. Ah, yes, I had heard about this. So, yeah, some of these skills will be instantly familiar to you in terms of, like, other uh, skills over here. Some of them are just, you know, obvious. Small guns control small guns. Big guns controls big guns, etc, etc, etc. Some of them, not so much. They didn't really actually show up in future Fallout games. So, in case you're new to this, traps basically means your likelihood of spotting and disarming traps if you come across them. So, yeah, plenty of traps are just invisible to the naked eye. You need your trap skill up to be able to identify and disarm them. And then we've got, yeah, gambling for various games of chance and outdoorsman, which is a really interesting one. It's kind of like, you know, the ancestor of survival in New Vegas, which of course Obsidian added into New Vegas. It wasn't in Fallout 3. Practical knowledge of the outdoors and the ability to live off the land and knowledge of plants and animals. But I know that even though it doesn't say it there, because I looked this one up so I was a bit confused by it, this actually affects what you encounter out in the world. Because if you're good outdoors, you're likely to be able to, you know, like, spot bad situations ahead of time and avoid them. So you might get an option to avoid an encounter or get better encounters in general. So, I'm not sure I'll bother investing in it immediately, but it's interesting to know about. So what I'm looking at here is, yeah, it appears to be three spore plants and two geckos uh, right over there. So probably what I want to do is not engage those guys directly, or at least not engage in the middle of the spore plants. Maybe lead the geckos off to one side, murder them, and then take care of the actual spore plants right there. Because uh, can I actually just end combat immediately? Uh, hang on, am I allowed to do that? And no, there's hostile creatures nearby. So I'm automatically in combat. And where actually am I right now? This looks like an old camp. So, radiation warning sign. Okay, you see nothing out of the ordinary. What's that down over there? Brahmin meat, Brahmin meat. So someone lived here at some point. There might be some good scavenging to be done here. So I probably do want to take these guys out purely so I can scavenge. Because yeah, there's actually a handful of different uh, tents around here. So go on then, we do actually want to finish this off and- Ooh, hello. What's all this over here as well? A bar. Lardy flipping die. Yeah, I could probably go for some booze. Uh, let's murder ourselves some geckos. I think I can handle all of this, though it might cost me healing powder by the time all's said and done. So one, two, three, four, and then go in for a stab. 50% chance to hit, four. That's as bad as it can get, so that's no good at all. Probably, yeah, at that point, just end my turn, except the extra armor condition. It'll come for me, and I was critically hit for three. <laughs> dear, oh, flipping dear. Though, actually, it looks like none of the others are actually coming for me right now, so that's nice. Let's just actually continue going for this guy. 44, and 13! That's better. How much health do you have? He's already severely wounded, so... Probably he's got, like, 25 hit points or something thereabouts. So, yeah, just take the extra armor condition. Hopefully, avoid. I was hit for three. These guys aren't hitting hard, but they seem to be a lot more accurate than me, which is mildly concerning. Just sooner or later, I'll get a bloody hit in. Oh, good, I was just critically hit again. So, this is going well. I'm having my ass handed to me by a plant this time. This is even more embarrassing than the Kaga incident. And it looks like that actually reduced my action points for this turn by the looks of things. Uh, this is why I bring a knife along for flipping emergencies. So, stabby stab. There we go. I missed with the knife too. Okay, we finally managed to kill one plant and I'm almost dead. So now I'm just going to take a couple of steps away and if I'm lucky, yeah, the combat is over. Right, let's get the hell away from all of these geckos. I don't necessarily want to be fighting all of this. I would rather scavenge these tents and potentially get the hell out of here. Here we go, we got some pots, some crates, all sorts. So if I'm lucky, there might be something I can help myself to around here. Also, I need to make a choice, of course. If I actually use healing powder, I will be suffering perception minus one, but honestly, I kind of feel like I need to <laughs> because I'm already mostly dead. Marvelous. I'm going to give one more go to first aiding myself here, and I failed to do any healing. And also now it's night. Good job all round. Right. I would like to be able to just get inside over here. That's right. 
Never mind, the geckos have seen me. That's fine. I should probably be out of range of the actual mutated plant, so it's not the worst thing in the world. But I'm going to lead him away just for safety. So in my turn over there. And yes, 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 I get another turn. That's absolutely fine. And that. Let him come to me. I just want no one else getting involved. Here we go. This is what I wanted to see. So he's nice and over here. Time to lose all my health again. 37% chance to hit. Marvellous. So at least we actually did a good 11 right there. That's not bad. Uh, end my turn. Take one more armor condition. He missed. And now... Yeah, now we're not doing so bad. What condition are you in right now? Severely wounded. One more hit should do the job. But he's fairly on the evasive side. That was five. That was bad luck, actually. Missed again. Take the armor condition. And he critically missed and managed to kill himself. Yeah, critical misses were quite extreme in this game. You could really knacky yourself, like he just did. Also, hilariously, despite the fact that we've actually searched three houses so far, I haven't actually found anything useful yet. There hasn't been a single item in any of the flipping tents. So, I'm just going to try and avoid the other gecko and the other plants and all the rest of it. And who am I technically under attack from right now? I'm not sure. I'm just going to run away from them, whoever they are. I assume it's a plant. But they're not going to be able to do anything. No, they've already given up the fight. Lovely. Oh, I've got something. It's a rock. Nice. The granite ink model is an upgraded version. This is actually a weapon, by the way. The damage range is very, very low. It's only 1 to 4. But it does have a range of 15, so you can just toss it at someone if you want to. Right, so basically I've swapped half my life and one healing powder for a rock. So, good decision making by me. Let's carry on, shall we? And we continue on to Klamath immediately because I was already on the way. So, uh, I'm kind of hoping we just make it there without any more problems. And also, when we get there, hopefully there might be a doctor. A doctor would be flipping spot on. So, yes, yeah, several days have passed. These are supposed to be long distances. We're very slowly travelling. And here we go. Klamath. And because so much time has passed, I've actually regained one perception, and I've also got my health back. This is because of healing rate, because that fight didn't just happen like five minutes ago or whatever. That fight was now several days ago. So healing rate of one, which isn't spectacular because I haven't exactly invested in endurance that much. At the end of each day, your character will heal one hit point for each point of healing rate. When you rest, you heal every six hours. Now, admittedly, I feel like I shouldn't actually be at 32 right now, because, yeah, I was at, like, 18 and, like, a few days have passed. So I'd actually expect to be in the 20s. But possibly travelling is supposed to count as resting. I'm not 100% sure. I might need to look into that. But basically, the point is, you will heal over time. Gotcha. And here we go. We've got ourselves a, a town. Ideally, with a shop. Ideally, a shop that will sell me a flipping gun. And my first lead, of course, is somebody called Vic. Because apparently he actually delivered this flask to our village at some point. This relic of the vault was probably used to contain some sacred sacrament. The holy number 13 is emblazoned on the side of the precious link to your people's past and hopeful future. It weighs two pounds. So, find Vic, show him this, get directions to vault 13, head over there, get Gek, job done. Really fun thing about classic Fallout, by the way, you didn't know who people were if you didn't already know them. So when you actually kind of hover over people... It just gives you a vague description. If they get any description at all, it probably means they have a proper conversation to give to you. Not necessarily with like an animated face and voice acting, but they will actually have things to say to you. They won't just be generic townspeople. But until you speak to them and they actually tell you, you don't know their name, which is kind of cool and makes a lot of sense. Let's start off with a notice board here, just in case it says like, hey, no one knew welcome in town or whatever. There are several things here. Some ads, job notices, and even a drawing. It looks like some of these have been here for a while. I will take a close look at that drawing. A crude drawing of what appears to be a Brahmin with a big X through it and the word Tor scrawled underneath. Okay, interesting. Tor and a Brahmin. So over at Mar Buckner's bar, Whiskey Bob needs some help with refueling his still because he's got a dodgy leg. Fine, head over there at some point. Feeling grubby, nothing makes a fella feel better than a nice bath. Three fun-filled types to choose from, featuring the beautiful and talented Jenny, late of the den. See Big Nose Sal at the bathhouse for more exciting details. 
Now, if I was the suspicious sort, I would say that that bath might be a euphemism for something else. But that's absolutely fine, because I am keen to sleep with as many people as possible, and I don't discriminate on gender grounds. The beautiful and talented Jenny sounds just flipping perfect. Someone wants to buy gecko pelts? Fine, haven't run into any of them. Yeah, they want golden geckos in particular, haven't run into them as yet. Here we go, genuine antiques. Vic the Trader, east side of downtown. Because yeah, often these towns were split up into different areas, because they were generally quite big. So okay, east side of downtown, we now know where Vic is, spot on. Missing person, anyone seen Smiley the Trapper? Smiley's about six feet tall, clean and housebroken mostly. Disappeared up north, and I kind of miss him, Arden Buckner. Alright, so, few notes there, let's actually start investigating around town. So the guy by the door says he's Aldo, the town greeter. It's my job to greet anyone new in town and to answer any questions they might have. I'm a little suspicious, I don't feel like a town this small would have a town greeter. Okay, and ooh, I can probably give myself some airs here. I am John of Arroyo. I am the chosen one and also extremely sexy. But no, let's keep things nice and polite for the time being, but not go announcing myself too soon. And here we go. He wants $5 before he actually answers any questions off me. You know what? I am swimming in money because I robbed my aunt. I'll give him the $5, even though I'm probably being robbed, just in case he actually gives me any good tips. So, here we go. It's $5 enough. Thanks for the money, friend. I'm going to use it to get some medicine for my dry throat. Consider yourself officially greeted to the town of Klamath. Do you have any questions? Here we go. I thought he was just going to take the money and run there. So the town's doing the basic stuff, raising Brahmin, doing some farming. But what most people do is trapping geckos. All right, we saw a mention of Smiley the Trapper. So this place is presumably close by to like a big gecko colony or something. And they just trap them and then trade the meat and the hides. Makes sense. And of course, we saw the shop the Golden Gecko was willing to trade for hides together with Buckner House, which we now believe is like a pub or a bar or something. Lovely. And now we know which part of town we're in. Whiskey Bob is usually at Buckner's place right here in downtown. So this part of town is officially called Downtown. Gotcha. And I'm guessing he doesn't know where to find a Gek, but I may as well get into the habit of asking. A Gek? Heck, you mean a Gecko. <laughs> Never heard about a gag, but I'll tell you about geckos. No, 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 no. I think there's a bit of confusion here. And back in these days, don't forget, you can actually barter with basically anybody. It's just an option whenever you're chatting to people. So if you want to, you can just see what he's got on him and see if he's willing to trade for it. Oh, I just went to speak to a child and they yelled, you're scaring me and then I'm not afraid of you. Yes, it's because I've got a weapon out, which I really flipping shouldn't. The game kind of expects you to like, you know, not have your weapons out while you're in town. I'll keep my spear around, but for the time being, yeah, don't actually get it out. But if I run into trouble, I can just pull it out immediately without spending action points. So uh, let's just actually put that away. And now people will be less scared of me. Lovely. And as for the big lad, we also saw when we came in, me Tor. Okay, so we saw his drawing of a Brahmin on the board. It was very good, Tor. Is anything interesting going on? Bug men take moo moos at night. Tor scared? Help Tor. Okay, I'm willing to help you guard the Brahmin, sure. Bugman. Who would be taking the Brahmin? I mean, potentially rad scorpions might be sneaking in at night and killing the odd Brahmin. That's certainly possible. You help Tor, Mumu's field. He points east of here. Now, yes. And go on. I am willing to help you guard the Mumu's. And, ah, as I was expecting, the old scorpion. And this... This is why I decided to actually have my spear ready, just in case. So this is the grazing area for Brahmin, and now we are officially in combat. And all I want to do is take out this little scorpion right here. And obviously miss twice in a row. Yes, and uh-oh. Who are those guys over there? Are you guys on my side? And you see very similar looking men. They could be twins. Both are heavily muscled and have beetling brows. I'm a little bit suspicious of those guys. Uh, right, end my turn. Tor, are you planning to help by, like, you know, punching the scorpion or anything? Oh, never mind, I got my second go first. That's nice. Continue stabbing. Sooner or later, there we go. Killed in one hit. End my turn. Are they about to attack me, or are they actually on my side? Can I end combat at this point? Okay, there we go. 60 XP. Let's have a little chat with Tor here. 
So, do you feel good about that? Bug men bad, no let bug men eat moo moos. And I hope we can put a stop to these things attacking your moomoos. I mean, Brahmin. I don't think anything would attack with both of us here. Yay! Hopefully, that's like a little mini quest worth a few extra XP. And I'll also help myself to an extra scorpion tail. Lovely. Someone's going to be wanting to buy them. All right. Well, what about these guys over here? The twins. What do you guys want? You here to help us or not? We might have a job for you if you're interested. Okay. By any chance, are you something to do with the rad scorpion? Are you trying to steal the cows? Uh, there's one thing we could use some help with. Okay, they're laughing here. We need some help in liberating some Brahmin from that idiot Tor. You shouldn't have trouble with that. Just talk him out of them. What do you say? Oh no! A light Tor. Alright, and the cows clearly belong to the town. You are Brahmin rustlers. No, 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 no. I don't want to do that. Word to the wiser, you just better not say nothing to nobody, because if you do, that would make us very angry. You don't want to see us angry. Sorry, I won't tell anyone I promise, Mr. Dunton, sir. Goodbye. Don't want to see you angry. I don't want to see your ugly mugs at all. Ooh, let's see if we can actually start a fight here. And um, probably... Yep, yeah, thought this might go wrong, but you just punched me, and I was just hit for 10 hit points. Oh, they're very, very tough. Okay, I'm, I'm about to be murdered. I see the problem here. They can actually punch me for 10 points of damage. I'm... I'm in trouble. I'm in a lot of trouble. Right, so I've knocked him down for 12 hit points, and... No, that's a scrub. And he looks wounded, but not severely. Oh, I could actually be in a bit of trouble here. Right, end my turn. If they just punch me, and they do the same damage again, I am in trouble. No, actually... They haven't managed to do it a second time. Right. 45% chance to hit. 45% chance to hit. I feel like I have been very unlucky here. End my turn. If I'm lucky, maybe get a second one. He comes in and misses. No, he doesn't miss a second time. That's eight hit points. And I'm almost dead. Oh, good. This is marvelously good news. Right. Knock you down. That means I think you get less action points. Knock you down as well. Damn straight. There's 13. So, Dunton was hit for... Oh, yeah, they're both Dunton. Oh, I don't know who's who precisely. <laughs> He's wounded. He's severely wounded. But if they get one more hit in, I'm dead. Because they can just punch me to death. Too late to run and... Okay. I shouldn't have picked a fight with them yet. I should just stop picking fights with anybody for the time being. Okay, we can come back and deal with this later. Once I've got, like, a gun or something. So, if I'm polite to them, but therefore I know they exist... Could I actually, uh, yeah, then go over to Tor, recruit him as a temporary companion? Because I feel like he might be able to outpunch even them. So I've spoken to them, but this time I was polite, so it didn't turn into a fight. Fine, we'll leave this be for the time being, because yeah, there's a little shack down here, which I might just be happy to rob, potentially. And over here, there's a giant pile of scorpions. Right, I'm seeing the problem here. Yeah, there's a lot of scorpions in this part of the world. And something of interest, because yeah, if you hold down shift, certain items are highlighted in yellow. And I think purple if it's like really important. So I see rad scorpion limbs. Okay, hang on, is that just a tail or... No, rad scorpion limbs, give me more information. These rad scorpion pincers are hollowed out and have a strap with a broken buckle at the end. Weighs... Ooh... Is that actually a flipping weapon? It is as well. Right, rad scorpion limbs. But they don't... Oh, no, hang on. They're not a weapon. I mean, it feels like it kind of should be, but it's actually not. Well, I'm guessing that Tor wants me to actually wipe out the rad scorpion infestation. And right now, I am actually, yeah, very close by to a town. So if I take a few knocks, I can go and see a doctor. So go on then. I'll give it a flipping go, because with my new sharpened spear... I can actually, yeah, wipe out these guys a lot more flipping easily. Especially as I get 60 XP for every single one I kill. And actually, I hadn't noticed this before, and I can't remember whether it was the thing back in Fallout 1. For destroying your enemies without taking a scratch, you earn 60 XP. I wonder if you get bonus XP for winning a fight without actually taking a knock. I don't know if that's true or not, but I'll keep an eye on that. 
No, actually, tragically not, because I just killed another scorpion, but this time it did a couple of hit points to me first, and I still got 60 XP. That's presumably just for flavour, therefore. Alright, there we go. Nice and easy, and I have killed all of the rad scorpions that were threatening the Brahmin. Job flipping done. And at this point, yeah, I can actually one-shot plenty of them myself. And... Uh, okay, do I actually get anything else? I don't know why the game just faded away to black there, or the... Ah, the rustlers are gone. Fine, so the two solutions are either kill the rad scorpions or help the rustlers. Gotcha. I'm not sure why you can't kill the rad scorpions and then help the rustlers. It doesn't feel like those two things are mutually exclusive, but whatever. Also, hang on. Don't go back to tour for your reward just yet. There's a whole bunch of scorpion tails that need to be harvested and... Hang on, are they... Yes, they are still there. Good, good. Okay, giant pile of scorpion tails. Tor. Bugs dead. Moo Moo safe. Tor thanks you. Oh, I love you too, Tor. So, there's only one way out of this area, a little transition zone over here. Not sure where this is going to bring me, though. Aha! I'm up here, just a tiny bit further north from where I actually began. Lovely. And having left the area, I now get 250 XP and 50 karma for doing the right thing. Now, we're back in town, so spear away, and as a result of that... If I go over and speak to this child, uh, nope, still terrified of me, gotcha. Can't get in there, and hang on, does that say... Vic sign? Now hang on, this might be, uh, might be locked. Because it is like the middle of the night right now or something. Hello? Vic? I'm here to like... Oh, hang on, I need to actually set this. Because I need to be able to show it to him. So, set this item right over here. Vic's water flask, because this is how you use items, or rather show them to people. You actually just set them to an inventory, and then say, hey, show this to this guy. Also, I just got hit by a trap. I'm sorry, I wasn't actually trying to break into your back room or anything, I just wanted to come and find you. You know what, we should probably come back during the day. Here we go, rest until morning, 8am. And yeah, there's also a very convenient rest until healed option here. So if you want to, you can just basically just chill out until you're back up to full health. And because I was resting, I heal once every six hours, so that gets me three hit points back. Now, it's day. Vic, are you actually around at this point? Because I'm not trying to rob you, I'm just trying to flip and find you. Well, I'm just having a little scout around. I'm not planning to actually rob the guy, but... Yeah, I see. Vic's water flask times three. So... That's maybe not good news for Vault 13. This guy appears to have many, many water flasks. Almost as if he went to the place and ransacked it, as opposed to trading with them directly. Still, no sign of him just yet. Guess we better just have a little bit of a looksy round and see if we can find him elsewhere. Here we go. Bathhouse, you see nothing out of the ordinary. Oh, you sweet summer child, I feel like this is not actually a bathhouse. There's definitely something out of the ordinary going on here. I mean, look at this. There's all these rooms with beds. There's not even a single bath here. You could at least pretend. My name's Big No Sally Dunton, and oh dear. So Sally Dunton, potentially her brothers, dad, children, whatever, somebody is engaged in Brahmin rustling. Dear, oh dear, oh dear. I'm afraid we just have girl bath attendants here. That all right with you? Yeah, absolutely. When I'm having a bath, I don't care who's scrubbing my back, to be honest. And what if I say I'm just here for a bath? And if you want an unattended bath, you might try the Golden Gecko or the Buckner House, but I doubt you'll find that as enjoyable. And uh, I was just kidding, I'd like a special bath. How much for a special bath? Because I am keen to, you know, start the counter ticking up here. So the special baths are varying costs by the amount of time that the gal spends with you and any special services that you take advantage of. I get to be with a real live girl! <laughs> Sign me up! Well, okay, I'd like to know what the prices are first. I do have a fair bit of money, but I don't want to get fleeced too early on, because I don't have a gun yet, and I probably should actually get a gun. So, the baths we have available are a washcloth hand wipe, a brief full body wash, and lastly, the round-the-world full squeaky clean servicing offered by the talented and beautiful Jenny, recently trained at the finest house in the den. Wait, is this actually... Is this actually a bath? Now I'm getting really confused. I don't think I'm ready to take a bath with someone else watching. I'm going to leave. I'm sorry we couldn't help you out. Come back later. Okay, I want to get the price. All right, give me the price list at the bare minimum. So, the round the world full squeaky clean wash. How much is that actually going to cost me? I don't know if Jenny will even take you in in the condition that you're in. You're going to need a thorough no-nonsense scrubbing first. With the cost of the pre-scrubbing. The round the world full squeaky clean. $185! Whoa! Whoa, 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 whoa! No! 
I think we're not doing that. Okay, what about a nice cheap wash? $25 for a basic wash. Okay, I feel like that's actually a bit on the expensive side. So, uh, let's actually, you know, see if we can actually go and find people to seduce without having to pay for it first. Here we go, so we found Jenny, the supposedly attractive superstar who costs $185 to hire. And any chance of some personal beauty tips? Well, then you better talk to Big No Sally. She makes all the business arrangements. Fine. So, she's not interested in speaking to me at all. But, what if I ask you about Vic, a certain trader of before time stuff? You're interested in traders? When I mostly just work with one trader, Vic was his name. He always had extra money to blow, or at least when he worked, he did. See, so he specialised in really old stuff. You know, technical thingies. Alright, tell me more about Vic. I need to know about this guy before we meet him. Real sweetheart, he'd go off for weeks at a time and then come back with all sorts of before time things. But he often had to travel to the den to sell them. Not much call for that sort of stuff around here. Here we go. Where's Vic now? I don't really know where Vic is. I know he has a house just down the street from us to the east. He could be out trading with tribals or even in the den for all I know. I hope he's okay. He was getting to be more than just a steady customer to me. Oh, that's sort of sweet. And yeah, vault tech stuff. He might have had some stuff like that. I'm not sure. I know he did have a lot of really old stuff. Okay, if he might be at the den, could you point me in the direction if he's maybe gone there to trade? A hive of scum and villainy southeast of here. Maybe about a week or so. Don't remember too clearly. Anyhow, it's an exciting place. Dangerous, but exciting. Sorry to leave there in a way. Alright, now that's interesting. We've got some information, a good lead here. And yet, it's very important in an old Fallout game to go around, speak to everyone, figure out what they know. Because the game doesn't give you, like, you know, quest markers obvious advice or anything, you've got to figure it out by yourself by speaking to people and pulling all the information together. And hello, we've actually got ourselves a club, a military or police baton. I think I'll be having that, thank you. And I don't seem to have lost any actual karma for that. Luckily, you were actually facing away. You're an unnamed bath attendant and... Okay, are there actually baths here? Is there any actual bathing involved in this process, or is that just a euphemism? Also, apparently I'm being mentally undressed by this woman. Okay, gotta pay to play, sugar. Not sure who you are exactly. Yeah, it does just appear to be beds. I don't see a single bath. Alright, carry on down the street here. Let's see what else we got going on here. Because some of this will just be, yeah, people's houses, and they might not necessarily have anything to say to me. So, you, my good man. Ah, hang on. You. Word to the wise, you better not say nothing to nobody. Right, so we've run into those cattle rustlers. And uh, don't worry, I won't tell anyone. Now tell me something else. Aha, new options with you. What do you want to know from us? And uh, yeah, go on to the creation kit. You never know who might know something. You're looking for a ward. Close as I ever get to the Garden of Eden is in lovely Jenny's arms over at Mars Bathhouse. Yuck, yuck, yuck. Right, let's move on from that. And he also claims that he's got a good supply of our world-famous Dunton's Dry Meats. Okay. What is dry meat, to be precise? Um, we've also got Cat's Paw Magazine. We've got, ooh, some healing powder. Okay. What else have you got that might be of interest? That's a crowbar. Give me some information about that. Minimum strength of five, very solid and heavy piece of metal, specially designed to exert leverage. Okay, we might be able to do some good stuff there. He's got some money, he's got some meat jerky, and we don't actually know what flesh it is. And sometimes in Fallout games, when slightly suspicious people have meat, it can be human. So, who flippin' knows? Right, time to figure out which of my bits of gear I might be interested in selling. How much is, like, say, one of these here knives worth? So that is worth, yeah, just put one in over there. Forty dollars. Okay, that's not bad. I might be willing to sell that to you just to basically get your money off you. And you value that thing at 215 so we won't be buying that just yet in that case. Spear's worth about $80 by itself, though. That's not bad. Any interest in the scorpion tails? Right, $5 a piece. 
for them. So put another two of them in right there. That's 65. And then I want 65 of your dollars and you'll probably be willing to make that trade. Lovely. And next along the street, we have got the Golden Gecko. So this place was an actual proper store, mainly working in the trading of gecko skins by the sounds of it. And one of the patrons here at this bar shop, whatever, says, I can see by the way you move, you could do with some pointers. Okay, this might be swapping a day's worth of time for some free skill points. So uh, go on. Sweet, sweet science. The sporting art. Go on then. Teach me some magic spells. Uh, he grins broadly. Sure, and Begora, I could teach you all about the wee folk leprechaun spriggans. Uh, I feel like potentially by taking him up on this offer, I'm about to lose science, but I'll see what we've got. Talking to those around you. Do you hear that? I got myself a live one here. Wants to hear about the fairies and wee goblins and such. Hoo-ha. He doubles over in laughter. Right. So he's willing to tell me stories about fairies if I buy him a drink. Alright. Maybe we come back to him later. Because if Vic's out of town, we might want to rob him. And I'm pretty sure I saw some booze in his house. But somehow I feel as though you're pulling my leg a bit. Well, maybe I am at that. Nevertheless, you are a bonny good sport about it. Here's a beer on me for taking it so well. Spot on. So I'm not a total mug, and he actually gives me a free drink. Now, any chance you will actually teach me some real science? And the manly and womanly art of hand-to-hand -hand combat. Okay, that I could actually do with some real help with. So yeah, if I'd actually just gone along with him, he'd have basically just robbed me for a free drink and told me lies. But as I've actually called him out on it, he's being a good sport about it. And now he's probably going to boost my unarmed. Lovely. Several sweaty hours later, so you see what you were doing wrong then. Oh, bloody hell, did I just lose my virginity? Right, I might need to check my perk card in a second. And apparently, Mr. Sullivan has helped me out. Flipping beautiful. And he's actually given me, yeah, my melee... Oh, wow. My melee and unarmed combat skill. And 150 XP. And he's helped me level up. You know what? I'm going to give you $10 for some booze to say thank you. No, no, no. I could nay take money from you. It was my own pleasure to teach you what I know. You take darn good care of yourself now. You got real potential. You know what? For a guy who was basically planning to rob me when I walked into that room, me and him have become fast friends. And I get 10 karma for trying to give him money, even though he wouldn't take it. And any chance I could learn about where you learned to fight, in case there's another train around here somewhere. That was a long time ago, when I was a wee young lad and didn't have any sense in my thick head. A place called Reno. Keep your nose clean and stay away from the likes of that place. Ah, but can you tell me where it is? I didn't want to tell you, and you get on now. Just keep out of harm's way. Goodbye now. Aw, goodbye John Sullivan. I like you, you're flipping awesome. And previously he was just listed as a bar patron, but now when I hover over him, he's listed as John L. Sullivan, because I actually know who he is. So that's actually been updated, which is really cool. The Golden Gecko Tavern, Hotel and Trading Post. So I am Sajag, I run the place, what can I get for you? So I could have a drink, I'd like to buy a round of drinks for the whole bar to introduce myself, or I'd like to trade. That might be a bit on the expensive side. Let's start off with trading. So healing, supplies, booze, all kinds of stuff. I've got a special source, you might say. Ooh, that sounds a little bit on the suspicious side. Fine. And always willing to look at a good gecko pelt as well. Fine, so if I kill some geckos and get some pelts, come over and have a chat to this guy. He'll probably pay better than plenty of other shops do. Oh, here we flip it go. Guns and rad away. Nice. So, radiation is really interesting in this game, which is, there is background radiation, and you're picking it up in the waste, but you don't know about it. Until you actually find and install a Geiger counter on your Pip-Boy, you've no idea how irradiated you are. So you might actually be starting to suffer from radiation poisoning without really knowing about it. The game will flag it to you a little bit, like down in the text at the bottom left, it'll be mentioned that you start feeling unwell, or you're bleeding from your nose, or whatever. So there will be hints, but you don't know exactly how irradiated you are. I don't need to worry about it just yet. Though then again, there was a Beware of Radiation sign on that event I ran into, so... It's entirely possible I'm more irradiated than I think I am right now. Let's not worry about that. Let's instead focus on what this guy's got in his inventory. Oh, this is the stuff right here. 10mm pistols. Leather armour. How much is any of this going to cost me? 10mm pistol is $600. The leather armour... 1,500. Yeah, guns and armour were expensive in this game. How about just the pipe rifle? 
That's $400 and also uses 10 millimeter. Okay, what else have you got floating on? Oh, stim packs, throwing knives, uh, stabbing knives, and uh, leather jacket, which I believe does actually offer some protection. $500. He's also got some money on him and a little bit of ammo. I'm going to assume, yeah, that's 10 millimeter. Okay, what can I sell to you? Because I do actually have this spear for 80 and these weird little kind of claw things, which apparently you're not interested in. Okay, so the spear that's not my main spear, I almost certainly want to sell that to you. Lovely. Do I want to sell the other knife? I don't know. I may or may not want to sell the other knife. I will sell you all the scorpion tails. Uh, so that's up to 105. So give me uh, 105 right there. And we will call that a good deal. So that's me up to about $400. So I'm in the range of being able to potentially buy some of that stuff off him. But bear in mind, because he's only got $60 on him, I'm going to need to offer some of my own stuff in exchange. I won't just be able to buy it with cash. Okay, let's actually just go back out to uh, his little dialogue right now. What else can we do here? Like a room for the night? No, I'm fine, to be honest. Buy everyone a drink. No, let's leave all of that for the time being. I need to have a little Luxy round town. Potentially, I might be able to find some more jobs that pay money, like, uh... Hang on, there was actually a job mentioned on the board as we came into town. Is that actually... Yes, Buckner House. There was, like, uh, Whiskey Bob. Whiskey Bob, who's in here, and he needs help refilling his still, which might be some nice, easy money. Though before I do that, I have actually got a... No, don't go over there, I want you to level up. And here we go, I get to pick my first perk. So, 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 so. All sorts of very good, powerful perks in this game. What do we want? Cautious nature, you're more alert outdoors and enemies are less likely to sneak up on you. With this perk, you get plus three to your perception in random encounters when determining placement. Yes, this is another thing that perception does that the game doesn't explicitly flag immediately, which is the higher your perception, the further away you'll start from enemies at the beginning of the fight. Meaning, of course, as you've got high perception, you'll be more likely to hit them than they will to hit you. But of course, it also means you can run away more easily. So there are definitely advantages in that. Earlier sequence, so I can attack earlier and potentially more often. That's certainly not bad at all. Ah, now this is a very important one, potentially. You've learned to pack your equipment better. Accessing your inventory only costs two action points in combat instead of four. Because, yeah, if I do actually need to go into my inventory to, say, pull out healing items in an emergency, that costs AP. If I get that down from 4 to 2, I can get two stabs in with an AP4 weapon and also access my inventory in a single round, which is very, very tempting. Smooth talker, you've learned to increase your dialogue options without understanding what you're talking about. <laughs> you know what? I quite like that description. That's good. So each level of this perk will increase your intelligence by 1 up to 10 for the purposes of dialogue only. So in the event there are extra options that would only become available if I had high enough intelligence, which the game doesn't normally show you. Of course, in New Vegas, you'll see checks that you're not able to pass so you know that they're there, so you can potentially come back later with a skill magazine or whatever. In this game, they were just invisible, so more options might start appearing I wouldn't otherwise see. But each rank increasing my intelligence only by one doesn't seem that great, to be honest. Swift learner's not a terrible thing. Leveling up, yeah, faster. And then finally, thief. Alright, so potentially plus 10 to sneak, lockpick, steal, and traps. That's not bad, actually. That's, that's not bad at all. I mean, that's 40% to various skills that could potentially be of use to me. But I can't turn down quick pockets. That's just too damn good. We'll be going for that. Lovely. And 16 skill points as well. Now, if Vic's out of town, we might want to actually break into his house. So what I'm actually going to do is I'm going to get lockpick straight up to 50%. That's tagged. So every single skill point is worth 2 XP right over there. Melee is up to 66%, which is not bad. By the way, you might be looking at this and thinking, wow, you're only like level 3, how do you already have so many skills at 55, 66? 
This is not up to 100. These skills go up to 200. It's kind of weird. If I understand it correctly, this like means your chance to succeed under optimal conditions. But very often you'll be doing these under not optimal conditions. So as a result of that, you can go up to 200% where things are twice as likely to occur as they would be under optimal conditions, were you? It's a bit confusing, but basically it goes up to 200%. And as I believe there's a trap on his door, I'm just going to boost this to 20. Just because I feel like traps probably shouldn't be 18%, given they can kind of kill you instantaneously. I could get speech up as well, actually. That wouldn't be a bad thing. Yes, yeah, speech of 50%. That's not bad at all. I really wouldn't mind some first aid, you know. 25% first aid. Okay, yeah, go on. 25% first aid, why not? That'll flip and do for now. Okay, we've got a handful of people in here who have actual descriptions to them. So one of these guys is Whiskey Bob. This guy has got himself a big red nose. Uh, I'm guessing you might be, yes indeed, Whiskey Bob. Uh, I'm John, nice to meet you, Whiskey Bob. Uh, always nice to find another drinking buddy. Want to buy me a drink? Talking always makes me thirsty. So... Uh, you know what? I might actually be willing to do that. I feel like this guy might be important and I might be able to get some lovely money out of him given enough time. Thanks for the drink, partner. Oh, I think I might have just given him the beer that I was given over in the Golden Gecko. Because I wasn't actually given an option to like, go and buy a drink. So I assume I've just handed over the beer I already had. So, now I feel I can share a little problem I have. Maybe you can help me out. Go on then. I'm guessing this is the still. I saw this on the sign outside. I have a little side business that I need some help with attending to. I have a moonshine still outside of town that needs to be fueled up every so often. But since a gecko done bit my leg, I can't hobble out there before it runs out of fuel. I'll tell you where it is. Would you refuel it for me? $50. Yep, I'm up for that for $50, thank you. So, a little shack just south of town. Go inside and dump some firewood into the still, then come back here and I'll give you your money. But it needs to be done within the next day or my batch of hooch will go bad. Fair enough, I'll do that. Maybe kill some geckos if I'm lucky. Maybe a golden gecko among them. And as a result of that, some lovely stuff I can sell over at the golden gecko. Spot on. Before I go, however, may as well check in with everyone else here, just in case anyone else has got anything good to say. And you are Arden Buckner. Lovely. And you didn't see a trapper named Smiley outside of town. Aha, I saw this on the sign as well. So Smiley, who went to go and trap some geckos, has just gone missing. Gotcha. I'm afraid I've not run into that person, but I will keep an eye out if you want. We were finally getting serious with each other. I thought I'd finally gotten him to agree to settle down here and help me run this place. He said he needs to go off on one last quest. Okay, he called it a quest. He told me he thought he knew where all the golden geckos came from. He wanted to find out for sure. He thought that maybe it was some kind of magical spring, or maybe a hidden cave or a vault of some sort. Okay, do you happen to know, like, where this is? Because I might be able to find a body, some golden geckos, all sorts of exciting sexy stuff. So, he's two weeks late getting back than he said he'd be, and I'm getting worried. Okay, I am willing to help out. Do you have any idea where he was actually going? Let me mark on your map where he talked about looking. I sure hope you can find him. He isn't much, but I still love him and I miss him more than I thought I could. <laughs> he isn't much. What a lovely way to introduce him. Yeah, okay, I will do that, but first, let's figure out what else you know that might be of use. So her daughter knows the local gossip, speak to her in a second. And other than that, nothing much from her, fine, we might need to come back to her later. Now, are you the daughter? Hang on, there's a daughter somewhere in here. Here we go, Maida Buckner, spot on. I don't tolerate any tribals messing our family's place up, so you better watch your step here or you'll end up like Sulek. What do you want? Okay, you've just mentioned someone by name, which means he's important for some reason. And uh, first things first, let's just have a little look, see what you've got to trade. And once again, it's Gecko Pelt she wants. Fine. So potentially, go and find that woman's boyfriend, bring him back, or bring back proof that he's dead. And yeah, we might actually be able to actually get some Gecko Pelt at the same time. And she's got spears, first aid kits, stim packs. How much for a stim pack? I think those are quite expensive. Yeah, $500 a piece. I'm not sure about that, actually. Gecko Pell, roughly how much are these actually priced at? $80 to buy. Okay, that's interesting. And a rope that is also $80, but Fallout 1 did tell me a very important lesson, which is uh, you buy a rope when you've got the opportunity. 
Because they can be very, very useful indeed. Also, I've still got that beer. I'm not sure what I gave Whiskey Bob, but I gave him something. Also, how much for healing powder? Just the one. That is... Not that much, really, but I think I'll be fine with what I've got. You know what? I'm going to buy the rope just because it was important in the original Fallout. So I'll offer that. I'll buy a rope off you. That's absolutely fine. Here we go. Tor and his stories about the bug man. But we know about the cattle rustling already. Because, yeah, we know it's actually the two brothers, sons, whatever, of the woman who runs the bathhouse. Fine. So we know what's going on there. But they've said don't say anything. Or they might try and kill me. So turning them in might lead to some unfortunate consequences for myself. And she's not sure if there's any connection between this and Brahmin mutilations, which is apparently also a thing the town is worried about. So I'll look into that for you. You know, potentially I'll be able to shop in the two brothers. And here we go. Nearby towns. There's only a couple of towns nearby. There's Reading to the southeast and the Den a few days south. I wouldn't go to the Den. And yeah, what about tribes? I didn't count tribes when you asked about civilized towns, but I guess there's a group of savages somewhere to the northwest, and then Sulik's tribe far to the southwest. Okay, interesting. Tell me about Sulik here, because yeah, you mentioned him straight away. So he's a tribal paying off a debt. He's not a slave. We don't have slaves here in Klamath. Yeah, you've just got indentured servants. That's so much flipping better. So he got real upset one night and had too much booze. Then when he was good and drunk, he busted up the place, did nearly $500 worth of damage, just now getting the place repaired. Ah, I see. So potentially if I were to pay off the debt, would he actually be willing to come with me as a companion by any chance? So he found out his sister had been kidnapped by slavers, but you'd have to ask him about that. He's here until he can pay off the rest of the damages. Okay, how much is left? $350. I could actually pay that off right flipping now, potentially, but then I don't have the money to buy guns and armor. But a companion could be very, very useful indeed. He may be slow, but he does sort of grow on you after a while. Looks away wistfully flustered. <laughs> All right, she's got a bit of a thing for Sulik. Gotcha. And yeah, what if someone else paid off Sulik's damages? I don't know why anyone else would want to, but they could. His bill comes to $350, but you wouldn't want to do that. He'd only get into trouble again. Okay, I might be willing to do that, but not just yet. I want to have a Luxie around town first, just to make sure I know what all my options are before I spend my money. All right, so I think we've actually seen most of the big buildings right now, leaving nothing but, yeah, some good stuff right here. I'll be having guns and bullets and nuka cola. And that's not even officially stealing and karma loss. Good. Good, 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 good. So, now, we can just actually use this. Have a quick read of the book. And as a result of that, I now know how to handle my guns a little bit better. Still don't have any guns. I'm reading books about guns. Still no sign of the actual guns themselves. Well, I could try and buy one, but... Ooh, would I rather have a gun? Or would I rather free someone from indentured servitude? Oh, that's a tricky one. Right, more things we can potentially deal with, though. I don't trust footlockers, because in Fallout 1 in the hub, one of the footlockers was booby-trapped. I'm just going to trap skill this, just on the off chance you fail to find any traps. That doesn't mean there aren't any traps, it just might mean I'm terrible at it. So, ah, oh, here we go. There's, uh-oh. Well, there's healing powder, and I'll be having all of that, thank you. But there's also a flower. Now, if I remember, this flower is actually the same flower that the Unity was handing out to the people in the hub. So, I'm mildly concerned about that. Oh, yeah, we got all sorts of stuff here. Take it all. Take their fruit. Take their knives. Take their flares. Job done. We can sell all of this for money. I'm not sure whether I should be suspicious in here. There's a little wooden shack which appears to be filled with the remains of Brahmin and Brahmin bones and all sorts of things. And there was talk of Brahmin mutilations. Whoever lives here might be a Brahmin mutilator. Or possibly it's just someone who's like, you know, producing Brahmin meat because uh, this is just the person who owns the Brahmin. I'm not sure. Right, I think that's actually everything in town. So... Back over to Vix. I want to explore Vix thoroughly. Now we know he's not just in town. He's just actually naffed off somewhere. So we need to explore this place for clues. I think we know where we want to go next anyway. We need to go over to the den. 
So, check all his stuff here, including a deck of tragic cards. A uh, deck of cards for a collectible card game. Looks like it could be an expensive hobby if you get hooked. Several more water flasks and beers. Yeah, I'll take all of his beer, together with his booze and his Nuka Cola, spot on. Now, this door attacked me last time I tried to open it, so... Try my pathetically low trap skill against it. Didn't find any traps on the door. Okay, is it locked? In which case, try and open it if need be. You failed to pick the lock on this door. Is it actually locked or not? The door appears to be locked, so that's fine. I am allowed to give it another go. Though sooner or later you might screw up and actually break the lock. There we go. Took a fair few attempts, but we've got it open. 25 XP to open that up, and now we can access the back room. So this guy had this place locked up and booby-trapped. Why? What was he hiding? Well, he was a traitor. He probably doesn't want people doing exactly what I'm doing right now, which is plan to steal literally everything. And oh, here we go. Stim pack, flipping gun, and bullets, and what's that? Vix radio. Okay, a handheld radio doesn't work, but it looks like it's still in pretty good condition. Some of its parts could probably be salvaged for use in other radios. Alright, take it with me in case there's any, like, you know, repairing that needs to be done. I've got a flipping gun. Nice. So, pipe rifle, range of 20, damage between 5 and 12, not bad at all, ammo, oh wow, 1 out of 1, fine, so you need to fire it, then immediately do a reload action, so, uh, that's a little bit on the tricky side, I see, and I tell you what, if I'm maybe heading back out into the world, uh, let's actually eat that golden gecko, and nothing happened, okay, um, I thought I was supposed to be eating this for, like, food, Nothing happens. I would have thought eating food gave you health, but maybe I'm misremembering or getting confused with other Fallout games. Okay, as I've actually got a gun, I'm making an executive decision, which is uh, you are being freed. Because I might need some help dealing with some flipping golden geckos down south. So, uh, here we go. Questions for you. Tell me about Sulik paying off his debt. He got so upset. Has to work it off. Diddly diddly d. What if I wanted to pay it off? And while I'm sure he's happy working for you folks, I couldn't stand to let him be effectively enslaved. Here's the money. I have enough to pay for the damages he caused. Right, flip in here. Lovely. Ooh, I guess all you tribals really stick together. Screw you, I'm just a nice person who also potentially wants to use him as my indentured servant. But like, in my case, he won't actually be working in a bar. He'll like be going out and punching geckos. Honestly, I'm putting him in a much worse situation. It looks as though you don't have enough money for that. Wait, don't I? Oh, hang on, I money to sell some stuff. She's not wrong, I'm 18 short. Also, I really need to keep an eye on, yeah, all these different weapon types. So, uh, that baton is 1 to 7. So that's not actually very good. Uh, that thing is also 1 to 7. Fine, uh, which weighs less in that case? Actually, you know what, I'll just keep the knife. The knife seems more badass. Here we go, she's got $300 on her as well, spot on. Right, $115 for some booze, spare weaponry, and the baton and all of that stuff. That should get me plenty of flipping money. And now, for a third time, we can actually try and buy Sulek. Sorry, not buy. That's definitely not what I meant. You must be crazy. I'll sure be glad to have that damn sob, tribal sob away. Sob, sob from here. Further sobbing. Oh, I'm sure we'll come back and visit sometime. Wait, hang on. I'm not sure I actually ever bothered speaking to Sulek to get his opinion on all of this. Oh, now I feel really bad. Sulik, congratulations! You're free! We and I thank you. Name Sulik. How can we repay? Right! He's really important! He's actually got himself an animated face and a voice and everything! So, uh, how can we repay? Ooh, have you got some form of tribally belief or something? The spirit's with me, friend. They be all around. Sometimes talk. Ooh, interesting. I mean, I can't poke fun. We've got shamans in our village, too. Spirits be everywhere. Travel with we and I. Grampy Bone do most of talking. Okay, Grampy Bone. Him strong spirit. Much honor carrying him. Ah, potentially like, yeah, the bone that's actually in your face. Keep him close. Easier to touch his spirit. That's why he talked the most. I wonder if that's literally a bone from your grandfather you've got embedded in your face. Fascinating. 
We and I know many things. Travel from Great Saltwater to home of Biting Lizards. Ah, Biting Lizards. Is that by any chance the same little area that, yeah, the woman in this room wants me to go and rescue her boyfriend from? Geckos. The little dudes don't bite hard. It's the Goldens. They go through your leg like an old pipe stem. Right, so tougher variant of Gecko. Haven't run into them yet, but they do sound a little bit on the nasty side. Ah, yes, and here we go. You got heated and actually trashed this place because you thought your sister had been purchased by some slavers or something. Sis went trading at another village and never come back. We and I go look for her. And what have you found so far? One survivor. Dude was in bad shape. Said evil warriors came with magic torches. Fire would lick tribe warriors and they'd go to the spirit. I'm not sure what any of that means, but what about your sister? The evil warriors tied up the rest and took off. Sis with them. Friend, we be finding her or die and trying. Yeah, so slavers presumably with, like, guns or something. That might be what he was talking about a minute ago. So, uh, do you have any leads on your sister? We and I know they're slavers at Din. When we're free, we're out of here. Ah, I might be heading towards the den too, because I want to go and find Vic there. And go on then, would you like to be my first companion? Because you have an animated face and a voice actor, so I'm guessing you do. We're there. Grandpa Bones say we might find Sis with you. So me, you, and your grandfather's bone are going on adventures together. Yay! Not just Grampy Bone, all tribe spirits. Grampy Bone just wiser and stronger than the rest. Let's ease on down. All right then, we've got ourselves a friend. Also, 500 XP for freeing him. Here we go, so what is it you're actually good at, Sulik? Because I'm guessing you're more of a stabby, punchy sort. We be good with fist, spear, big hammer, submachine gun. We be a handful. Oh, never mind, he can use guns, fine, but probably we want him on melee, because then he can be at the front tanking for me while I start figuring out how to use guns. And apparently he can also consult the spirits for me. The spirits are sometimes hard to understand. They see things you and we can't. Right, so I'm guessing he's a bit like Mama Murphy, which is he might give me slightly cryptic clues that could still be very useful, pointing me in the next direction I'm supposed to be going in, and maybe giving me information I can use in certain conversations. Gotcha. And yeah, what do the spirits tell you about this little town? Bad spirit under something... snaps. Not sure what that mean. Alright, bit vague, but yeah, we do know there's definitely some dodgy stuff going on here. Brahma mutilations, uh, cattle rustling, uh, Vic's gone missing and headed over to a town everyone deems to be very dubious. And here we go. I step outside and now we have got ourselves a Sulex. Spot on. So he starts off with a leather jacket and he's also got himself a sledgehammer. Which I couldn't use, but I'm assuming he can. So good, he starts off with a big weapon for slamming people in the face. This is marvellously good news, because I was just thinking I don't really have anything to give to him aside from a little tiny knife. But you know what, ladies and gentlemen, I'd say that is enough for now. We have had some very important firsts today. We've got our first gun. We've got our first companion. We found our first town. We've done our first quest. We've discovered our first little mysteries. We've got potentially our first few leads into the gag. And most importantly of all, we've run into our first random encounter in the wasteland that immediately killed me. And that's not gonna be the last either. So we will leave things off there. Next week we will kick off by taking Sulik and my new gun down to the Gecko Hunting Grounds and seeing how we do as a team. Because, yeah, the wasteland was a bit much for me when I dragged myself into town. But now with Sulik and a gun by my side, we might just stand a chance. We'll see about that next week, ladies and gentlemen. But in the meantime, I've been John. This has been many a true nut, and this has been Fallout 2. Thank you very much, and goodbye. Ah, we have got a gate key here, and then we have got ourselves. I've made a mistake! I've made a mistake! I've made a mistake! I've made a mistake! This is gonna take all of my skill and cunning as a hunter to sort out. Die, you moving bastards! Die! Die! Go, go away! Go away, nobody likes you. That was a good idea till it wasn't.